I'm Maurice Alroy. I scored a perfect 800 on the math section of the most recent digital SAT, and I'm also a tutor for College Board. And although not every hard SAT math question can be solved using entirely Desmos, a lot of them can. Here are four of them, plus an extra bonus one that we'll cover at the end of the video. A line passes through the points. What is the y-intercept of the line in terms of m? Whenever you have two points, and you're trying to find the equation of a line that passes through these two points, what I want you to do is just put these points into a table. How you get the table in the first place is by pressing the plus button on the top left and then clicking table. Right now, we're going to get an error message on the table. What I want you to do is create a slider for M. The way you create a slider is by pressing the letter A and then the letter that you want a slider for directly after. And just pick the letter that you want a slider for, delete the other one. As you can see, we're able to see these two lines, I mean, these two points move around. They're not a line yet. All we want to do, very simple, click this regression button up here, and we get the equation of a line without having to do any math. You'll have this on the SAT. This is completely allowed. And I forgot to mention, all of the answer choices are the y-intercept or potential y-intercepts of this line. So we graph it as a point or x is zero because the y-intercept is when x is zero. What we can do from here is just duplicate this four times because all of the answer choices are pretty similar. We have all four points. The problem is that they're, they're all the same color because we duplicated the color. Now they're all different. And what you can see is that for every single value, every single value of M, the red dot is the only one that sits on the y-intercept at every single value of M. So real quick, let's recap. We made a table. We plugged in the two points that we were given. We defined M by using a slider. And then we pressed that regression button. Let me show you one more time. This regression button to graph the line that we want. After we entered A, B, C, and D as points, we can see that only one of them is the correct answer because only one of them sits on the y-intercept at every single value of M, which is answer choice B. Hey, real quick, if you're liking this explanation, you're going to like my free one-on-one -on -one tutoring. More about this at the end of the video. Okay, custom linear regression. Now this is pretty similar except it's a little more advanced. So I'm gonna need you to pay attention. The equation of line P is 193X plus RY equals S. The line Q passes through to points 0, 4, and 5, 2. If the system of equations consisting of line P and line Q has infinitely many solutions, what is the value of R plus S? Again, same first step for any sort of regression. We add a table plus table. Now, go ahead and input our given points, 0, 4, and 5, 2. And what we want to do from here is we don't necessarily want to click this button because the problem with this is this actually gives us y equals mx plus b form. We want this form directly. Now, what we want to do here, pay attention, this is important, is 193x1, and how you get the x1 is literally x, and then press one directly after, it automatically makes it a subscript. Plus R, Y1, the reason that we're using X1 and Y1 in the first place is because X1 and Y1 are the X and Y headers of the table that we used. So we're basically telling Desmos to refer back to the table. Now, instead of the equal sign, do the regression sign. It's a tilde. It's probably on the top left of your keyboard if you're using a computer and then put S and see how you get R and S right here. Again, this is allowed on the SAT. You're allowed to do all of this. Now let's solve the rest of this question real quick and then I'll explain what I just did. R plus S, just use the variables because they're already defined for you. R plus S is 2412.5. That's our answer. Okay, let's explain what I just did. So when we click this button that says add regression, we get this, this. But what if we don't want the slope and y-intercept? For example, in this question, what if 
the coefficient in front of the x is already defined as 193. And we just want to solve for r, y, and s. Well, we can create our own custom linear regression. That's why this is called custom linear regression. And put in x1, y1, and tilde. Now we have two more custom regression examples that we can do. One for quadratic functions and one for exponential. You guys are going to like this one. A quadratic function f has its vertex at 6, negative 10, and the point 0, negative 1 lies on its graph. Let g of x equal 3 times f of x plus 4. What is the value of g of 2 minus f of 2? All right, again, we always start with the table whenever we're doing regressions. And then we do 6, negative 10, and 0, negative 1. Well, the first thing that we need to find is what is f of x? The second thing we need to find is what is g of x? And then from there, finding g of 2 and f of 2 is pretty simple. And we just subtract the 2. What we absolutely cannot do is press this button for add regression and then switch it to quadratic. This gives us the vertex at 0, negative 1, even though we want the vertex right here at this point. And we also want it to face upwards. Here's a little side note. Hear me out for a second. When you have two points and you're doing a regression between two points, it's hard to mess that up because there's only one line that can go through two points. But as you can see, there are multiple parabolas that can go through two points. Not only do we want the vertex to be at 6, negative 10 here, we also want it to face upwards. So we mess it up twice. I'm going to show you the workaround for this. This is how to actually get the correct equation. The easiest way is just a custom regression. So again, y1, so type in y, and then type in 1 directly after. It goes to the subscript. And tell Desmos that we want this graph in vertex form when the vertex is 6, negative 10. Here's what I mean. So this would be a times x minus h squared, right? Except x is x1, because we want to use the x1 from the table. So x1 minus 6, because 6 is the x value of our vertex, squared minus 10, because negative 10 is the y value of our vertex. You need to memorize vertex form for this. From here, Desmos automatically solves for a for you. You don't have to do it by hand. So we can actually write out our equation with a. We don't need to put 0.25. And then x minus 6, because this is our vertex form, minus 10. This is our parabola. If we turn this off, because now we know that a is 0.25. The regression just solved that for us. We just solved for f of x. Without having to do any math, the next step is just to solve g of x. And we can simply input everything that we got in this question. g of x equals 3 times f of x plus 4. So literally 3 f of x plus 4. Again, you're allowed to do this on the SAT. This is perfectly legal. You get f of x and g of x. And again, no math required. g of 2, it solves it for you, minus, do it on the same line, f of 2 and negative 24. That's your answer. Again, let's recap real fast on what we just did. So we just created a table with the two points that we were given. And since we want 6, negative 10 as the vertex, we did a custom regression using vertex form where we plugged in 6 and negative 10. So then we wrote out f of x. We wrote out g of x because g of x is already defined for us in terms of f of x. And then we did g of 2 minus f of 2 to get negative 24. So this is an insanely powerful tool. Typically, this question would take multiple minutes for students to do if you didn't have Desmos. But with Desmos, this maybe takes less than a minute. Last regression question, and then we'll move on to a bonus. The exponential function given above passes through the points c, 9.2, and 2c, 31.04. f of x equals a to the power x minus b. This is our custom form. What is a possible value of b? Just like the first question, what we want to do is define c. 
because otherwise the table just doesn't work. And how we bring up a slider again is we press A and then the variable we want a slider for. And then you press the slider for C, you delete AC. Perfect. So now we have a slider for C. As you can see, the points are moving around. Now, since this is an exponential function, because we know it's a to the power of x, we can see that when c is negative, this is exponential decay. When c is positive, this is exponential growth. Just something to consider. What we want to do from here, again, use your custom regression form, y1, y, and then put one directly after, and put it exactly in the form that you're given a to the power, so now this is going to be x1, right, minus b. You need to make sure that this question is correct. So what you want to do is adjust your slider for c and check whether or not b remains the same. Now the only spot where b isn't the same is when c is zero, but c can't be zero because then this function wouldn't be a function. There would be multiple y values at the same x value of zero. B is always going to be negative four. That's why our answer is negative four. Again, this is completely allowed on the SAT, so you should learn it. And specifically, you should learn when to use it. You should always use this regression tool whenever you need to find the function that goes through two given points. Even if they're not perfectly given, for example, in this case, we had C and 2C, you could still define C and you would still get the function. At least you would still get a consistent B value. At the end of the day, that's what you're solving for. All right, one more bonus question. This is not about regression, but there's only one way to solve this problem and it's on Desmos. So since this is a Desmos video, I thought I'd include it in here. I call these questions equivalence questions because they always give you a function and they always give you four other functions to determine which one of these four are equivalent to the answer choice. Now, the problem is, is that some of these are not even fully simplified. So in a math class, typically you would try to add these fractions together, simplify it down completely, but a lot of these aren't even simplified and the correct answer is actually not fully simplified. So what I do, because it's very easy to do a lot of work, spend a lot of time and not even get to the correct answer is put all of these four into Desmos and whichever graph, either A, B, C, or D, line up with the given graph that is your correct answer. That's it. Let me show you how that works. Now from here, what you want to do is duplicate when you can. What you're going to see after you're done all of this is that you get five error messages. You should get five because this is A, B, C, and D, and this is a given equation. All you'd want to do to fix this is just add Y equals in front of every single graph. We want to find the only graph that actually matches up exactly with the given graph. To make this a little bit easier, we're going to use different colors and we're going to unhighlight all four of the graphs except for the given one. What we'll see is we, when we turn on A, A is actually seems like the right answer. But the problem is, is that it's not. Because if you zoom in, these are actually not completely overlapping. You have to be very careful here. Make sure that not only did you input all of these correctly, including the given graph, but you're also zooming in when you do highlight the individual ones. Now let's go through the rest of the answer choices. Obviously, this is not the answer. C is not the answer either. But if we take a look at D, it is completely covering the green graph. I don't see any green on this graph anymore. That's how we know that D is our answer. I know that this method is not quick, but this is the only way to get this question right every single time. We want to use this trick every single time we see an equivalence question. If you want free one-on-one -on -one tutoring from me, go to dsctmath.com. I will tutor you for free until your next SAT. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, the reason why I'm making such a crazy offer is because I'm not going to start charging for my tutoring until I have 10 high quality testimonials. 
Right now I have 19 students. So even if half of them are successful, I'm going to stop tutoring for free because I'm gonna have the testimonials that I need to feel comfortable charging for my services. So sign up when you can. This is actually free right now. Now, last thing, if you're not motivated, if you're not willing to put into work, don't sign up. Anyways, I'm rooting for you. Good luck on your SATs.